Hello, and welcome back to the Sunday special episode of the UF Podcast. I'm Jordana Abraham. And I am Jared Freed. So good to be back here with you, Jordana. We love a Sunday special, correct? We love a Sunday special. This one we're going to add an extra bonus email into yes. because we didn't get a chance to get to it on our Wednesday episode. So we're going to read this email, and then we're going to have a very special guest, Jesse Metcalf, on at the end of this episode. He so, was great. Yeah, he was great. We already pre-recorded it. Um, but we're going to have him on and we're really excited for uh, the show. Yeah, go and go watch Jesse's movie, On a Wing and a Prayer. That's the name of the movie. It's on Amazon. He yes. was nice enough to come on with us. It looked like a great movie. It seemed great. And yeah. he, you know, looks He was really, cool. Yeah, he was cool. Looks looks great. Cool dude. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. You just say, it was like, yeah, you could tell why he was Sean Tucker. Like, right? For sure. He's got like a charm. Right. For sure. Right. Totally. I mean... I asked him to get drinks. It didn't seem <laughs> like that. kind of dodged it in a, in a way a cool dude would. <laughs> right. He cool dude me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he totally cool dude me. You're not fully sure what the answer was. Right. It, it was like a... negative, but not a complete blatant no. I'll shoot him a DM. We'll see what happens. You're going to slide into his DMs? I, I'll... Well, send pics. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jesse. Send a full body shot. My grandmother's dying words were... <laughs> Can you get a drink with that cool dude, Jesse Metcalf from John Tucker Must Die? Make her wish come true. That's right. Let's do an email. Let's do it. Okay, I'll read it. Hi, J&J, longtime listener, and you up with Benefit Subscriber, along with your girl, Rebel Wilson. Oh, love a subscriber. Our favorite. I'm a 27-year-old woman living in New York. I loved hearing your must-have and would-prefer lists about what you are or were looking for in a partner. Along the lines of a list, I was wondering if slash how you would consider someone's resume as a part of the list. Resume meaning the non-prompt or photo section of Hinge. College, graduate school, where they work, what they do, where they're from. If we balance out all the other info like photos, prompts, height, neighborhood, etc., I still find myself Xing the guy from Oklahoma or went to Oklahoma State. But liking the guy who was from insert New York suburb and went to private university or well-known selective public university, <laughs> the Big Ten, I guess. I struggle with this because at 27, it really shouldn't matter if they went to Harvard or Indiana, but I can't help myself from considering it. Another one I'm not proud of. I'll nine out of 10 times like the banker, but almost 10 out of 10 times will not like the guy who's a teacher. Jared and I, I fully si Jared, I fully <laughs> side with you on this one. Jordana, when you were on the apps, how much weight did someone's bio have in deciding whether to go out with them? Jared, is this something men consider as well? If so, do any parts matter more than others? Love what you guys are doing, especially what you share on the benefits episodes. Sincerely, you can't fuck a resume. I love this email because it is incredibly honest. It's not very, it uh, doesn't make this person look or sound good quote unquote, yeah. I just think they sound human. Totally. Totally human. Um, it To you know, go to Plug City for a second, a big part of the stand-up special that we made together is about this. The X. The X, the, the seeing a person on a yes. screen and then making, and your brain going to places that you don't want it to go, it just goes. Like, Oklahoma right. City makes you think a certain way, and that might be good for you, Jordana, bad for me, or vice versa. It's the it's why the teacher joke keeps coming up. Yeah. Because it doesn't sound good to be like, I don't want to date a teacher. And I think it's totally relatable that yes. she, in her head, is like, am I being a judgmental bitch? Am I snobby? Am I elitist? Right. Or do I like what I like? But this is the weird, and again, this is the special, I say it, we're the Google generation. Mm -hmm. This is what we do with everything. We don't go out into the great grand world and get ourselves hurt. No, we we lead with safety. I'm yeah. gonna look up the restaurant before I go. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure the menu is good enough for me to go. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing with people. And you wouldn't do it in person as much. Right. You wouldn't because you would have more context, but this is the only information you, you're given. And I don't think there's anything wrong with these things are supposed to be signifiers. They're right. signaling that doesn't because someone went to Harvard doesn't mean they're necessarily extremely smart or a genius, but it's a signal that they might be smarter than your average person. Right. And, and, and it doesn't mean that they're, you know, yeah, yeah, 
Totally agree. And it doesn't mean that you're a money, dig, you know, a gold digger yeah. or whatever, because you saw, oh, if I see a woman that went to Harvard, I go, oh, holy fuck. Yeah. I, that's my, my human. That's as human as a cough. Right. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Right. And I, um, what, you know, when you're in person, you meet them. I think it's just, it's different the way it leads in person. It's, I think they look good enough. And yeah. we had this like. Vibe. vibe hey where are you from oh i'm from oklahoma shit i don't think i've ever met someone from oklahoma. you know you go you kind of do it reverse right well one because one you have so much more context and much more information to go on mm -hmm. and more meaningful information to go on whereas on an app it's like this is the only information you have of course you look right. at it what else do you have to base it on right and it's funny it's very female like am i doing is this okay like as if a man would ever be like, I only seem to be swiping on the woman with big breasts. Right. <laughs> Should I reevaluate? Right. Am I leading with too titty? Judgmental? Am I judging <laughs> titties too much? Yes. Yeah, that it is. No way. No man would say. No that. man. No, Should no. I be? Should I give the smaller, che smaller chested women a chance? Right. Well, I, I, I do. You know, again, I do this with like when you see someone put down their political stuff. I go, ugh, am I gonna have to talk to this? Like, I don't know how much that mattered to them, but it it hits me in a a pingy way. Well, that's why it's there, right? So that's what I'm to saying. To let me, yeah, yeah. You're, it's doing what it's supposed to do, right? I think all of that information is th are things to take into account. I think where it gets to be maybe more extreme is if you're like, I'm not going out with anyone who wasn't in the Ivy League, or I'm not going out with right. anyone who isn't from, you know. The suburbs of Long Island, like right. that, then you're sort of limiting yourself. But if you're kind of like taking it all in as a big picture and these things are attractive to me and these are on my list, so to say, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And we're all doing this. I think that's the other thing that they need to like take solace in is like, right. I'm seeing things again. The teacher example is perfect because it's like, who doesn't like a fucking teacher? You know, like I, I do. You and this girl. I Right. But I think it's a great job. It's a good person. It's a hard job. Some I, people I, love a teacher. Some people love it. And, and it just, you know, it's like we all taste the same food, except it tastes different to each of us. Right. You know, like you like something. I don't like something. I like something. You like something. It's perfectly reasonable. I, I think if you're like sitting there being like, I don't like that. I'm, you know, the, the other thing is like, they write about the finance guy. You know, if you're on dates with finance guys and going, I don't really have anything with these finance guys. I, maybe it's time to like reevaluate or maybe it's time to go meet people in person. Yeah. Or if those people are also not interested in you, that's another th reason to maybe reevaluate your right. standards. Cause these are all things that are like, if we talk about the list. These are all in the like good to have, but not essential, or at least they should be. I think if you're looking at dating in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, the only, I, to me, the only issue with this is if you're staying in it because Harvard. Right. You know, if you're like, ah, oh, they treat me like shit, but like I or get that Harvard guy. If you're rejecting because not Harvard, uh, depending on how far away from Harvard they are, I think that's fine. But it's kind of like, if you're rejecting any guy, like I said, if you're like not, you won't go out with someone who didn't go to a top 10 school, then yeah, that's a little limiting. Well, you it's limiting, but I, I think you can do that. You just can't complain. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, like, you it's can't write of, to us and go, can't find a guy. Well, that's what, the, that's what the annoying thing is. Or it's like if someone is being extremely picky, especially about things that are a little superficial, you have to ask yourself like, well, what are you giving? Are you, are you are, like, are you someone who can only be with these people? Are these people interested in you? Like right. there is a sense when dating of like, you can only be as selective as people are selective of you. Right. Like if you're if you're looking for a house. <laughs> Look in the mirror, bitch. Yeah. Right. How you looking? I mean, yeah. I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm in the. I, I so much of this kind of reminds me of like the house hunting thing. It's like right. you can all if you if you have a budget, you can only you can't have everything. So if you're kind of like, what's within my what do I what's really good within my budget? What do, what do I need versus what do I want right. versus what I you know don't need? Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna reject every house that doesn't have a tennis court. Like that's right. unrealistic. Well, yeah, I'm not working with like a twenty million dollar. Well, <laughs> like, but that's that yeah. goes back to the looking the restaurant's menu before you go. You go, oh, they got a few things I would like. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a, oh, they got, I, I would order this, this and that. I wouldn't get this. 
but this right. looks good enough for me to go. Yeah, you, you have know, to you be have to, like, um, you have to have reasonable expectations and under and be self. That's the other part of this, I think, with the mm-hmm. resume stuff. I think self awareness is a really big unspoken thing when it comes to the to the resume mm-hmm. thing. Where sometimes you'll hear about this, especially with guys and like superficial stuff. It's like I want to date a ten. It's like look at you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Or I mean, or even Jordana, please. Or or, I mean, honestly, even with some women, I think I'll speak to some women, and they'll be like, they're like five one, and they're like, I only date guys who were like over five ten. I'm like, why? Matchmaker Maria has like really interesting stats on that. Yeah, she has like a, she references this one stat a lot where it's like, you'll meet like I want a guy who's Jewish and above five eight, and she's like. Ah, uh, good luck. You know, like yeah. that's kind of a unicorn a little bit. Well, that's what I'm saying. You have to right? be realistic. <laughs> right. And right. she has like the numbers to that's show like, like, yeah. Yeah. That's like your mom being like, well, does the apartment have free parking? It's like, no. Oh, no. Of course. No. <laughs> like be, it, <laughs> that is a, for you yeah. to say, like when you were apartment hunting, I only want an apartment with free parking. It would be like, all right, well, then you're never going to find an apartment. Right. Well, good luck in Cincinnati. Right. Yeah, that, that totally. And and. The thing is, when I when reading this email, I'm just sitting here being like, "Yeah, you're speaking to my soul. Like, I I I get it, and it doesn't feel good, and yeah. it's really this is driven by apps. We, I don't think 20 years ago, people would go out like if someone was like, "Well, they're not a finance guy, and I can't do that. They sound like a dick." Yeah. But you know, I met this guy, and now you have it all. He didn't up front. go to Harvard. Right. Now you have it all up front, and you're not a dick. Yeah. For doing that. You know, it's like, it's really the timing of when you start doing that, that makes you the, and I think they're worried, like, am I this evil person? Am I being too hard? And it's like, no, you're being a human. And again, I think within, within, within reason. Right. Like you have to know yourself and know what you're looking for. And also like, I wouldn't get super hung up on finance or not finance. I don't think that's helping you, but you can, it's sure it could be like a perk if you're into right. that kind of thing. I'm only dating a seven foot nine lawyer. Well, that's she's right. She's out there she's, somewhere. Are you out there? WNBA. Oh, I guess she's not a lawyer. <laughs> right. okay. Former WNBA star. And attorney. Attorney. If you're out there, slide into his DMs. That's right. Well, well be right back. Jesse Mac, Cool dude, Jesse Mac. <laughs> We are joined uh, by a very special guest, right, Jordana? Very special guest. We are joined by actor and musician Jesse Metcalf. Welcome. Thank you for coming on. Great to be with you. I have to say, um, you've been in like such iconic movies and shows. It's been it was so exciting for not only me but our whole office that we were going to have you on the show. I'm lucky for sure. I would say John Tucker must die. Like we are in the iconic, iconic, and also a betch is like this is like. The, the the crew that like will reference that we daily weekly right uh, completely yeah <laughs> I mean that movie got panned when it came out so it's it's nice that people are finally appreciating <laughs> <laughs> the research is well I was telling I was telling Jared because he wasn't a teenage girl when it came out no. um, what the 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 synopsis of the movie was and he was like oh that sounds st- you were you were sweating on yeah. behalf of the just the plot that, that wouldn't fly nowadays would it I, I don't know. Would it? I, 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 I love misogyny f- flies in the movies right now. Well, John Tucker would be on the um, what's that Facebook group page? Like, uh, are we dating the same guy? Right. <laughs> do you do you have people approach you about that movie a lot? Definitely. You know, it's either Desperate Housewives or John Tucker Must Die. Those are the ones. Those, those are the ones. Right. Also a Desperate Housewives. I fans. hope that one day eclipse, you know, that level of achievement in my career. <laughs> uh, but well, I have yet to do it. <laughs> Listen, well, if you got two, that's better than zero. Who's better than zero? Right. <laughs> Iconic. I mean, it made you a star, I would say. Um, huge right name recognition. And uh, you're in a new movie, speaking of eclipsing your past stardom, On a Wing and a Prayer, which is available on Amazon now. Can you let everyone know like, what it's about, why they should watch? Well, it's uh, based on true events in the early 2000s. Um, the White family was uh, flying from Florida to Louisiana when their pilot inexplicably died. Uh, they found out after the fact it was a heart attack, but you know, with very minimal flight experience, Doug White was forced to land 
this complicated aircraft in bad weather to save himself and his family. Unbelievable. And, and you said also he Heather Graham's in the movie as well. Heather Graham and Dennis Quaid. What a crew. I know. How did Love I love it? Uh, how did I get in this movie? Well, hold on, because our, Jordana has a has a connection to Heather Graham. Well, I don't it's, I don't oh. know if it's a connection if she doesn't know that. This podcast, this podcast has a connection to Heather Graham. In that, I made a there is a Vogue article where someone talks about her having a list that she burns to meet her whoever her boyfriend was at the time, um, and then I had made my own list of traits that I wanted in a partner, and then burned you them. Burn the traits. Yes, you burn the traits. Well, she threw it into the ocean. Mine was a little more dramatic. I guess hers is dramatic too. Right. But yeah, take a, uh, the, your, the, the love of your, you know, the, who, the person I hope to love and go, and I'll throw it in the ocean. That's pretty dramatic. Yeah, a little, a little counter, counterintuitive, but hey, right. who do I know? Well, my friends and I remember debating, like, if writing down, if you're burning or getting rid of the list, does that mean you're saying that the qualities don't even matter? Like you're throwing away all your previous expectations or are you trying to like manifest the list? We couldn't be sure. Yeah. But we, That's why we got, you got to ask Heather what the meaning of throwing the list into the ocean was, but she's inspired after that, Jordana, you met, inspired by met my husband. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, you met your husband. So it worked. Yes. Yeah. Whatever voodoo she's doing. I don't know. Not a wing and a prayer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, I mean, this is a dating show. Can you tell us your relationship status? Uh oh, Status is single and I'm the last person to ask for dating advice. <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait to get into the email. How old are you? <laughs> old. I'm, how? 40, I'm 44. 44. And you look exactly how you looked on John Tucker. That was yeah, the first that's opening. That's because he's single. That's why he looks right. so young. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not stressed yeah. out. How yeah. do you, how do you meet? Uh, you know, people to date. How do you meet women? I meet women the old fashioned way, just out, you know, kind of going up to them, introducing myself. Uh, you know, I've never been on a dating app. Uh, I, I haven't had to get on a dating app, truthfully. I've, I've been pretty lucky in love. I've, I've had a lot of successful relationships, but I've never made it. I've never made it down the aisle. So um, what was the longest relationship you were in? 11 years, That's 11 years, Eleven years. Yep. It was a very successful, um, healthy relationship, but, uh, we were engaged for four years and that's a long time to be engaged. It is. Some yep. would say, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it, it's so funny. No guy ever says any bad thing about a past relationship. Everyone, unless, unless it's a divorce. I mean, and it's like, you know, <laughs> it's always except the, the, for all the, the guys that call their exes crazy. Well, that too. But I, I, uh, the, 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 just the, the, a successful 11 years. I love, I love that perspective. It's very conscious uncoupling. Yeah. I, um, you know, I, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't go that far. Yeah. Not <laughs> conscious uncoupling. Um, it was a little dramatic, but you know, we, we made it through. You said you're in Connecticut 10 months. Are you, are you living in Connecticut or are you live in New York? Where do you live? I'm living in Connecticut. I have a place in the Lower East Side in New York, but I've had it uh, leased out since before COVID. Um, I was living prior to moving back, you know, to my hometown uh, in Connecticut. I was living in Miami for eight months. Hold on. Yeah. You, you were living in Miami. Uh -huh. And then you got a place the Lower East Side that you rented out before well, I COVID. Had this place in the Lower East Side for six years. I live in the city. We should hang out. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> He's like, we'll see. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. No. But this is the plot of a Hallmark movie. Jesse Metcalf moves back to a small Connecticut town. No, I know it's the plot of every Hallmark movie. Right. What do you? Uh, how do you date there? What's going on there? Wow. Um, you don't. Yeah, you, you, know, okay, you take a little break, you know, chop wood. Yeah, I'm on a hiatus, <laughs> if you will, um, you know, finding myself. I mean, maybe it's a midlife crisis. I don't know. Yeah. It could be anything. Yeah. So you're not dating at the moment. No. I'm what not. do you think? Is, what do you think is like the best dating advice that you've gotten? The best dating advice. I've if gotten. any. I, I think the best dating advice would be do not ignore red flags. Mm, you know, okay. After maybe the second red flag, you kind of need to move on to the next person. You know, I mean, I, I think if you're a romantic, you tend to think that a relationship is going to right itself 
that people are going to to change, that they're going to evolve, and you're going to go on these, that you're going to be on you know parallel journeys. But I, I I don't find that that's the case. I think once you've seen a couple red flags of things that you can't really accept about the other person, you need to move on. Interesting. That's a good. I listen. I'm I'm with you. I'm a single guy. I I you. It, it's sometimes easier to you know look back and see the red flags than to see them when they're happening in front of you. I feel like when I look back, I, I saw them. You saw them. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes I feel like it can be a debate in your head of like, is this a red flag or am I being too picky? I think that's right. always the, the thing in your head. The issues, you know, I mean, I don't know. It could be any of those things, you know, right. <laughs> going from one uh, honeymoon phase to the next. Right. That's that's tough too. You know, it, it, you don't want to be that person too. If you break up too quickly, you're like, do I just like honeymoons? You know, do I never go to the next level? I'm being flippant here, honestly. I'm just mm. kind of like having fun with this uh, with this conversation. Truthfully, I'm ready to settle down. You, know, you I'm, are. I'm 44 years old. Yes, I'm ready to start a family. I'm ready to have have a kid or two. Your lights on. Yeah, as my they light, say in sex. I like blinking. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm ready to go. So, so um, hold on. So what's the scenario? We have like, uh, you know, I'm sure there's a million women who want to go out with Jesse Metcalf. You're in Connecticut. What do you do? <laughs> Where do they find you? Yeah. How does this happen? You're not on the dating apps. Why well, are you on Instagram? Apps? Do you get a lot Instagram. of people sliding yeah, into your... Instagram is basically a dating app. You know? Sure. Yeah. Uh, what would a woman have to write to Jesse Metcalf over to Instagram? What would they have to write? Not much. <laughs> really? It's well, all open. there on the profile, you know, just uh, say hello. Open and they need a non-public. They need a public profile so you can see a oh, picture. Oh, yeah, you got to be verified. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like not like private, so that you could. Yeah. So if a private account says, "Hey Jesse, I loved you and uh, John Tucker Must Die. I loved you. out. You're out. Out immediately. If you start talking right. to me about the roles that I've played, you're you're a fan. You're out. So. Oh, okay. I guess I'm out. <laughs> Hold on. So what would be so hey Jesse, it's me, Lauren. Um, I think you're cute and you seem fun on the U Up podcast. Would love to get a drink. I'm in Stamford. That could work. That would work? Yeah, that could work. But what if they don't send a picture? What do you do then? You just follow them? I don't even answer the message. Z there well, we go. What, right. You know what I mean, I mean you gotta identify yourself. What are we doing here? Well, yeah, send yeah, pics. The, yeah. yeah, send pics. Appropriate no, ones. A profile pick up. I mean, you know. But the profile pick is like itty bitty. Oh, that's your Instagram. You have some things posted on your Instagram, right? Well, that's what I'm saying. You need to have like an open profile, yeah. not like a private one. Because if you, I think if you slide into someone's DMs and you have a private profile, you're never going to get answered because you've given absolutely no information. Right. They can go look at your IMDb. This is true. Listen, let's get to the email. You ready to answer a listener question with us? Absolutely. Let's do it. Okay. You want me to read it? Yeah, go for it. Why does he want to date me now that I'm not single? So, hello, J and J and J. J I would J &J. love both of your takes on what is going on in this boy's head. We're both in our early 20s, work for the same consulting firm where we travel for work every week. We're based out of two different cities, but he lives in the same city where I went to college and where my parents live, so I'm there a lot. We were staffed on the same project last summer and became really good friends with flirty undertones. I totally would have been down to hook up while staffed together, but didn't want to make the first move given the fact that we work together, and he never made a move. Once the project ended on in October and we had a very little chance of working together professionally again, we started texting all the time. And when I was visiting my parents for Thanksgiving, he asked me to dinner. We had a nice, if a little awkward uh, time. He paid and we hugged goodbye. We started FaceTiming somewhat regularly and were super flirty. After that, we met up at a bar in London where we were both in town for a different work thing. We're based in the U.S. and made out the whole night. But he didn't make a move to come back to my room. Here's where I get confused. I've been in this city, in his city, three times since our London makeout. Each time he's made plans, drinks, movie, dinner, but has bailed the day of, uh, day of with a flimsy excuse. Each time this has happened, I write him off assuming he's not, he's just not that into me. Most recently with a cold shoulder, but each time he follows up profusely apologizing and insisting 
He wants to see me next time I'm in town. I finally told him I'm done with the drama and I started dating a new guy in my own city who was wonderful. Once he heard about my new boyfriend and from work friends, though, he called me to profess his love to try and to schedule a trip to my city, which never came up before. What's his deal? Why was he so rude, uninterested when we actually had the chance to meet up, but would beg for another chance each time? Would you have given him another chance if you were me? I've since blocked his number and told him I'm uninterested. Thanks for the entertainment and wise advice here and on oversharing and J-Train. So what do you think, Jesse Metcalf? Man, I almost fell asleep there. That was long. (laughs) I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) We're starting to find out your dating issue. (laughs) You have to make sense of the behavior of people in their early 20s. I mean, that is just, I'm, I'm so, that's far, the goal. <laughs> I'm so far removed from that. It's, it's, it's scary, but, um, I, I, I lean to, uh, he's just not that into you. Mm. You give this guy way too many opportunities and too many chances. And the fact that he wants, and he wants you now that you're dating somebody, I, I, he probably, uh, that's probably just ego and it's probably going to happen all over again. If you give him another chance. I agree. I think words are very cheap and very easy to say and easy to do. And he uses them well. He uses, and I think a lot of people get fooled by that because someone tells them what they want to hear. But their act, every single one of his actions shows that he's not actually taking anything seriously. He's not, he cancels every single date. Right. And as Jesse said, when you see the red flag, that's the red flag. Like this is the I. Want you when I can't have you. There it is. Plain and simple. There's the flag. He's holding it in his hand. This will not change. It is only the circumstances have changed, but the actions stay the same. If I still waves the flag. Advice. I, I, I would always date from a position of power. You know, you got to know your worth. Right. And I mean, the, the, it is interesting that she's still like, what's the deal? Even though she's like, I'm with a wonderful guy. Exactly. Well, I think you're kind of like, I think there's a part in the back of your head, especially when you're maybe a little younger or more immature, that's like, because this person was withholding, I'm like a little, there's always a little part of me that's attracted to them. Like I want to win. Right. You want to win and get, you're like, oh, like you it feel, it does feel like a little bit of an ego boost or an adrenaline rush to be like this person who was holding out on me has now given me this attention. What you don't realize is that actual winning is just moving on just being right like, as your shop by that's when have yeah. you ever been turned down jesse what i <laughs> who would turn down that I, face I, I begged for for girlfriend's back you for a girlfriend's back, back. Okay. Yes. yes i i i have um and every time it was a mistake so that's why i that's why i'm giving that advice now right i feel like i feel like once a relationship fails it's done so you're not into getting back with it. Is it ever okay to get back with an ex? I, in, in, unless you get back together and like, you know, get engaged and like get into couples therapy, probably mm-hmm. not. Well, right. make the real fixes that are really going, what's wrong with it. The, you know. Well, when you begged for these people back, is it because you felt like any part of the reason you broke up had fundamentally changed or were you just kind of lonely? I, I mean, pro- probably a little of both. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like guys can tend to do that when maybe they're not getting a lot of attention or they're feeling like they, you know, they forget that they weren't actually that into you. And then they contact you. And then you if if the person's sort of amenable, then they go on another date with you or they sleep with you. And then they're like, oh, now I remember. I'm not that interested. Romanticize former relationships, you know, and, and, and quickly forget about the issues of the relationship that ultimately caused it to end. Right. It's, it's, it's almost aspirational to go back to an ex. Cause you're like, Oh, I could be the guy that they want me to be. That's like, this guy's like, I can make the plan. Look at, I'll make the movie plan. Next time you're in town, I'll make the, the plan to get dinner. And then he gets to the doorstep of the plan. And he's like, I'm not that guy. I'm not ready for that. Right. This ain't me. Oh, that's, that's even worse. That's just like, I'm not, I'm just not that interested. Right. right. And I, and I want to be yeah, like he's plan B or plan C or plan D or, you know, well, like why, why, why would he cancel plans that many times? Yeah. Cause he's not that interested. I agree with yeah. you. What do you feel like is like the biggest difference for you dating now versus in your twenties or even like early thirties? I guess just being really ready for a serious commitment, you know? And how does that like show itself in, in what you do or don't do when you're dating? 
I think you don't give people and, you know, relationships as much time, you know, you kind of, you kind of got to read the room. You got to read the relationship, read the person and be like, is this going somewhere or not? Mm. You know, you know what you want, so that you, at least you should know what you want at, uh, at my age. <laughs> what would you do for a first date, Jesse Metcalf? I, like, oh, what, what would you, what would your plan be? For a first date? I mean, yeah. It, I'm sort of of the belief now that I don't think you should go that big on a first date. I think, I think you need to be very real on a first date and do something very normal and just talk and get to know each other because you don't want to set up crazy ex expectations early in a relationship. And you also don't want to be, you know, leading with impressing somebody like leading with your money or leading with your connections or have you ever made that mistake? 100%. What, what was the biggest date you planned that you went too big? Going on trips, you know, like trips on a first date, yeah, like taking, taking a woman on a trip on the, on oh, the first wow. date. Where would you take her? Who? The... So many different places. So, well, you've done this many <laughs> times. Cabo. Well, you know, that's the funny thing about that. It's almost that kind of one of those places yeah. that you can take someone on a first date. It's not that extravagant. You know? yeah. What? Yeah, plane is extravagant. How much did say. you make from John Tucker <laughs> Must Die? Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize. No, I mean, I just think it's funny because I think so much of dating is like even. OK, let's let's tone this down to be more relatable. Even if you're picking like a nice relation, like a really nice restaurant for a first yeah. date, like you're saying. And the person that you're going on the date with is like. Oh, wow. Like he must be really interested in me because he's mm. taking me to this extremely expensive, hard to get into place or to Cabo. Um, but really so much of that or so little of that is personal. That's just kind of like when you're saying you were doing that, that's what you did. It had nothing really to do with the person. It was more like that was just your style of dating. When someone's taking you somewhere, that's just what they do. It's not about you at right. all. It's like when someone says we went on an eight hour first date. It's like, no, that guy was on. That's what he does. He likes being that he wanted to be there for eight hours. It had nothing to do with date two. Right. He Which was is trying to hook up for eight hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's more about trying to hook up, isn't it? Right. Yeah, it's like you impress, let's hook up. I mean, that would work on me. A trip to Cabo? Yeah. Trip to Cabo? So you're in a bar, you're talking to a woman, you're like, let's go to Cabo? That's a bit extreme. Okay, right. <laughs> how, did the Cabo, how did the Cabo thing happen? The we, we had been talking for a little while before the Cabo thing happened. I, had, I didn't just meet her and drop Cabo like that. Right. No, you can't yeah. just drop Cabo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could if you're the Tinder swindler. It happens more often than, than, than you think. Actually. In the Hollywood circles? We don't get it because we're poor. The Hollywood circles, yeah. <laughs> right. We, in the Cheshire, Connecticut circles. No, not, not in the Connecticut circles. <laughs> Jesse, this was fantastic. We want everyone to go watch your movie. It's out right now. It is called On a Wing and a Prayer. It's available on Amazon. Um, Prime go day. watch it. You're, it was fantastic to talk to you. We want you to go and ask... Your co-star about if, if she remembers throwing a list of qualities into the ocean. Okay, I'll ask Heather her Graham. That, but then that means you got to have me back on the show. So. We're gonna You're have welcome. You Open invitation. Okay, great. Yeah, for John Tucker, anything. Yes. You just said that annoys him. <laughs> I'm, you sorry, just, I'm sorry. You just said that annoys him. <laughs> well, I'm not about to ask him on a date. Right. <laughs> not, I'm not trying to fuck him. You know? fair, fair, just trying fair. to get a drink on the Lower East Side. Okay, he said no already. Uh, just trying to go to Cabo. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, yeah right. I want to go to fucking get, hit the beach with Jesse. I No, I could never stand next to him on the beach. I would look a thousand pounds. Um... <laughs> So, Jesse, thank you. On a wing and a prayer on Amazon. Go, go, go. Everyone go watch this great date night, great night on the couch. You're going to love the movie. You got it, guys. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Bye. The You Up podcast is produced by Sean Kilby, Maddie Paul, and Jorge Morales Pico. Editing by Jorge Morales Pico. Social media by Maddie Paul. Be sure to follow at you.up.podcast on Instagram and send us your emails to uup at betches.com. Betches.